Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of New York City Crime Spot. Today, I sit down with the one and only, the legendary New York City graffiti writer, RD357. His art has been a part of New York City's landscape for over 30 years, and I was glad to sit down with him to discuss his entry into graffiti, growing up on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, different eras in graffiti, his high-profile 2017 arrest, and a whole lot more. If you want to learn more about RD, please visit his YouTube channel, RD357, or check him out on Instagram, Robert Dyer, RD357. I will link both of those to the description of this video. Also, a special shout out to my friend Jesse, I am okay. Thank you for taking the trip out to meet the one and only RD357. I hope you guys enjoy the interview. All right, everybody, today we're joined by legendary graffiti writer, Vandal, Mr. RD357, legendary New Yorker, in my opinion, just quite a character. What's up, RD? Hey, how's it going? How you doing, buddy? I'm so, all right. Can't complain. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on here. It's an honor. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. So walk me through, because um, you're a New York City guy, right? So walk me through growing up in New York City. Where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up on the Upper East Side most of my life, my uh, younger life. But uh, 18 years old, I started moving around a lot. Is my knees in that cut? Or? No, no, no. Uh, you good. Yeah, because I got you know, my leg thing. Yeah. <laughs> So, 18 years old? Yeah, if, by the time I was 18, I moved up to the Bronx. I lived up there for a while. I lived in every borough at one point or another okay. in my life. Brooklyn, very, very short period of time. A stripper I was living with. But mostly Upper East Side? Like growing yeah. up, like yeah, a teenager, Upper East Side mostly? Yeah, definitely between the Upper East Side of Manhattan, or Manhattan in general, and the Bronx. Okay, yeah, okay the Bronx. The, yeah, I lived in the Bronx on long ch like chunks of my life. Yeah. So we're talking about 70s and 80s, right? Yeah, yeah, 70s, straight up Manhattan, Upper East Side, okay. 62nd Street. Yeah. Right. Me, my mother, and my brother, yeah. Cool. So tell me about New York City in the 80s. Well, you were in Manhattan, so... Yeah. What was that like in Manhattan, 1980s? You're a teenager. What's going on? It's good times. I mean, we really didn't have to worry about much. Like, you could start out your day with, like, 2 or $3 in your pocket, and, like, that money would stay in your pocket forever. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you'd just go out. Like, we'd chip in for a handball or something like that. You know what I mean? People would be playing handball on and off. We'd sneak into the pool. and You know, just kind of, like, wilding out. Just uh, good fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But at some point, you you discover graffiti, right? Yeah, yeah. Later. I mean, I was pretty much uh, into thievery and stuff like that, yeah. and that kind of steered me towards... Like, I guess it, I'm like the poster child for uh, broken window theory. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> like, yeah, no, really that's good. We'll start it. with that. That's even it's more like, interesting. Like, I believe, like, you know, to jump into graffiti, I mean, yeah. I guess that is something that is known about me just because of people right. seeing it up a lot, right. but... Yeah, I eventually, like I said, I was on 62nd Street growing up, and I bumped into other kids, and yeah. we started hanging out and climbing into construction sites and stealing shit and okay. like, causing problems and stuff like that. And then, uh, like, my brother was older than me, and Lace, who's my brother's friend, that they were already into writing graffiti, so I tagged along with them once or twice. Okay. We'd go up to, like, the One Tunnel or something like that, up there, 137, 145th, you know, yeah. park a bunch of trains up against the wall there, man. I was never really big on it, but it's just everyone wrote graffiti. Yeah. Everyone had a tag. Right. So I really couldn't uh, not have a tag. It's almost like, I, I, to be truthful, I really didn't want to go. It, right. it was kind of scary for me to go. Like, I went, like, streets weren't a thing. Like, people weren't running around writing on streets. It's like, if you're going to be a graffiti writer, you're jumping in that train tunnel and you're fucking writing on them trains. And, you know, for... Uh, it's like, 12 years old or something, you know, it's, yeah. it was a bit much, but we, I didn't want to show my fear, you know, it's all about, you know, macho and yeah. alpha, and I'll do it, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, I double dare you type thing, so you jump in there, you start writing graffiti, and eventually, it, yeah, you just keep writing, because other people are doing it, you tag along with them or whatever, and then I finally... Probably by about 82, 83, when I actually started writing RD. Because before that, I wrote to Rob. I used to write down the four trains a okay. lot, the one trains. Uh, I wrote redo for a short period of time, R-E-D-O. Uh, I even wrote just around the neighborhood here with this... Uh, 
guy Cad, I wrote hair for a while. H A I R <laughs> for like one summer, you know. But yeah, by eighty three I became R D. I've been R D ever since. Right. I wanna go back uh before that. You said basically graffiti is not really your entrance into let's just say criminality, like doing criminal yeah. activity. As a young teen on the Upper East Side, what was something you would get into? Like you wanna you wanna wake up, you with your boys. You're gonna start well, trouble. Like, what is what, what are you doing exactly? Well, we would break into shit pretty okay. much. Uh, it'd be late at night. Um, you know, my mother, you know, she was raising two children, and my brother, pretty much doing the same thing as me. And uh, she's an Irish woman from Ireland, and she drank a lot, so she really okay. wasn't paying attention to our whereabouts uh, at later hours of the night. Okay. So we would start going out late at night. We'd sneak in, uh, break into... Uh, I remember in the daytime when I was actually able to move around construction sites. I okay. remember once this guy fucking split my whole head open. With a big board fell right on my head and shit. He was walking along. On it. And that was just us goofing around in the construction sites. We'd start up the cement mixers and shit like that. Yeah. I remember I had to get like six stitches in my head. Shit. Uh, I, I was young, so that was just kids goofing around. Even if someone's walking by you in the street and they just see kids hopping around back yeah. then, they're just going to keep walking. Uh, maybe, hey, get out of there, but, you know, no one's going to call the cops or nothing. It was, you know, it's uh, just... So thievery, stuff yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like kids being yeah. kids and shit, you yeah. know? But, uh, yeah, I'd say by 84, 85, probably, yeah, by the time I was in junior high school, that's when we started really, like, shoplifting. Okay. Like, as, like, uh, a means of making money to get high, buy marijuana and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, at that point, that's when we started stealing steaks, uh, tuna fish, shit like that, you know, we'd sell it to people and make money off it, and, yeah, and that's probably, it. yeah, by the time I got to Wagner, that's when I became RD, and I was really, like, seriously into graffiti, and just, like, robbing and stealing, but, I mean, everyone that was writing graffiti was doing that, like, robbing yeah. and stealing and shit, it was like a street kid thing, you know, and yeah. I think that's what's gone now, I think... Your friends, were they similar to you? Like single mom? Or did they come from similar yeah, situations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. all you young all kids are kind of yeah. left to your own like, devices, basically. My father was a very stern man, and uh, I'm proud to say was my father, but he lived all the way out in Long Island. So it's, you know, it's true about like an absent father. I'm not yeah. going to sit here like, oh, it's this fault or that fault. I'm in no trouble with anything. I've had a great life, you know, but I do believe that, you know, like my son, look, it, not to toot my own horn, but he's beautiful it's perfect he, he works he's got no uh, problems at all he's and not even been arrested you know so <clears throat> yeah. I, I think a, a father in a household thing is important i mean i'm, I'm almost six five 200 yeah. and something pounds uh, you know my mother was like barely five feet tall you know <laughs> like yeah. it's not much you know but i mean yo, know, she'll hit you man an old irish woman she don't fuck around she'll come at you with like an egg flipper yeah. or a frying pan yeah S man she'll get you with that shit man well, a spatula <laughs> So you find graffiti in the mid '80s, well, the early '80s, and you start, I guess, kicking it up a notch. What in the mid '80s, kind of going on the trains, yeah, messing yeah. around on the platform. Well, my brother, he got locked up, and he went to uh, prison upstate, like not like a little jail bit on Rikers Island. He went away for a couple of years. Okay. So when that happened, I started hanging out with Lace more. Lace three five seven. Uh, yeah, Lace. Uh, he's the president of three five seven. A lot okay. of people think I am, but that's not the way it is. So anyway, I started hanging out with him more because my brother got locked up. And that's when I started hitting the six trains with him and like really, really started concentrating on it, you know. In between then, there's a few dudes I'd go to school with. Uh, like I was in a truancy program. I, I, I was in Spa for the, after that, at that point afterwards too. I, I got out of there. Hawthorne Cedar Knolls I was in. So I was in a truancy program when you get released from these... Uh, Juvenile centers, they don't just put you, well, they did it originally. They put me in Taft High School, and yeah, I got kicked out of there pretty quick. But um, that's just because you're all amped up and violent. You're mm. fighting all day, especially a white kid. I mean, yeah. it, it's, you're a minority in that situation, you know? <clears throat> so, yeah, it's, you stick someone like that right in a general public school, they're going to yeah. not be so well to adapt. They're, they're going to fight, and that's what happened with me. But it's, so they're actually sticking like a truancy program. And it's really like I could be an A student and go into school in juvenile centers. But once you get out of them, like they got to put you in like a, it's like a truancy program. And wow. this one was on 49th Street, like 8th and 9th Avenue. 
It's a public school there, right where the truancy program is, where they would go to the video arcades on 42nd Street and they'd stalk them out and wait till they see kids that are underage that go in there to play video games and they'll grab them and they'll bring them over to that school and process them, tell their yeah. mothers and stuff like that. Me, I they actually had me going to school there. <laughs> like Me and there was a couple other dudes, this dude CB3, uh, X-Men, he used to write, I wrote with him a few times out in Brooklyn. Uh, Nays, TNS is another dude. Uh, these are inspirations? Like, yeah, well, these like are guys dudes that were like real young with me in Those the truancy okay. program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're, yeah um, uh, you had Sheen 13 and Cord, which were the Malganado brothers. Edgar and George Malganado, they were from up around Washington Heights area. Um, yeah, they, 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 they did that thing later on, I believe, in the drug trade. I started hearing their name oh, around, wow. you know. Um, who else was in there? Anthony, you had Shank. Uh, since I believe it's the Shank. It looks the same as when I'm seen around this neighborhood, you know. But, yeah, so I'd hang out with them guys and write graffiti. But that was not, like, militant. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I, that's one thing I'll tell you with like graffiti writers from like the era I'm talking about. Like, I don't see any of these dudes up now. Like, from that era mm -hmm. of time, Cost, Cost, uh, he was around back then. Like, yeah, Cost would have insides with profit tags and the CO fill ins with the doc and the KRT. He's one, but everyone else that I could think of, JA, no one else, no one else that I could think well, of. Who were some of the guys Not that you even saw like, uh, on the trains that, that the, inspired you, let's um, say, in the 80s? Who, who were some of your guys? All right, um, part. part. Part TDS, TDS. Band 2, um, uh, so many people. Uh, just. Um, a lot of it would be the IRT guys, so like Al Puma, LK, uh, Carrado, even Zephyr, believe it or not, Zephyr was up a lot, like he, was, like he would have tags all over my neighborhood, he would have, he hit the sixes with like TLP, like TLK, the local party and shit like that early on, he had the sixes a few times. Yeah, I heard they caught that guy. You know, this is how rumors are and legends, yeah. legends are created. But I heard they caught L. Kane. Like, they broke his nose and stuff, like sure. the Vandal Squad, you know. Like, these are rumors that I don't know if it's true. I, I, I never met L. Kane. I used to actually cross out L. Kane, you know. Uh, Jam 2 is another one that was up a lot. Um, yeah, Take 5. Uh, shit. Then you had, like, Fact, which was Code, uh, Dr. Pepper. He was up a lot. Duel, the original Duel, not Duel R-I-S. He had mm -hmm. Duel Wolf. Yes. He was up a lot on the fours with the mini. He used to catch a lot. Uh, KM on the ceilings. The studio used to do KM tags a lot. Um, TAT was up a lot on the sixes at one point. They actually had them shits on Smash, like Mac, Bio. Um, uh, you had the Dead End Kids. We, Bass, CR, Tony. Um, then you had Sexy Sage, Sage, TCM, Sade, uh, with uh, Dune, uh, Sade looked like, when he was hitting the six, it looked like he was hitting the insides by himself, I don't really remember him up with anyone, Sade, uh, TCM, yeah, he was up a lot, he had, he started doing a lot of nice panels under the windows and stuff, uh, yeah, that's when I was first starting to get on the sixes. So who was your who were your partners when you start you started hitting trains you started taking it seriously all right you're well yeah cars, Lace, you're doing big productions all right uh, on the insides it started out I did the insides for like four or five years that's okay. just a big flooded map marker just yeah. doing tags on the insides I did that for like the first three four years and that was pretty much like the sixes uh double r's on the broadway here i'd hit the d's up in the d yard i was going a lot, i was hopping around a lot. astoria later on i would catch astoria 86 around then when i bumped into all them dudes from out in astoria started hitting with a lot of them but all right in order it would be lace 357 uh, he brought me at that point it was be ESP east side party and before east side party it was esa and he was he was Amp, he wrote. And then when it was ESP, he wrote Jolt, and that's when he became Lace. Uh, but he had like 10, 20 different tags, like the puke pieces he used to do. Okay. He did a lot. He never did a sire piece at top to bottom in City Hall. 
and on some RTW website. They're like, here's another RTW. And I mean, he's down with RTW now, but mm -hmm. he wasn't down with RTW then. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it looks like something RTW would have done. And so someone just assumed. But yeah, Lace did that sire, S-I-R-E. That was for Frank Shambell that wrote Sire, you know. So you hear a lot of stories, right, guys back then on the platforms, you know, in the tunnels, yeah. uh, Vandal Squad, yeah. or even beef with other writers you run into. Oh, yeah. What he do you think is the... It's a beautiful story. What is, like, the like, most fucked up situation you've been in? You're doing a train. Is it at well, the probably Vandal I, Squad? I, probably when I got beef? my face cut open. Right? You got your yeah. face cut open. Yeah, Where was that, that would probably be the worst situation that's happened as far as I could think of. I mean, I was shot with a flare gun. Um, what, what happened when your face was cut open? What was I, uh, I was with... I mean, that's probably the time I took the most damage, would be my face getting cut open. Okay. You know, like the most of a loss, uh, you know. But, I mean, there's been times I've ran and fell off the catwalk and just like, don't, and like yeah. fucked myself up and was limping around for a couple of weeks, you know. But yeah, getting my face cut open was by other writers. Um, okay. It was a group of Dominican kids. Uh, they were a lot younger than me. I was originally up there with the student wrote Shama, uh, WKS, We Kill Suckers, you know, Vifa, yeah, Vifa Shama. Yeah. But she, Vifa wasn't there. It was Shama and this dude Arson, 156. Now, a lot of people think, oh, 156 and 357, they got a lot of beef and this and that. But no, it's not necessarily the, the way it was. It was just certain people that were in that group that were doing dickish shit. So. Uh, anyway, we're up in the A tunnel, 175th Street. We get some grading up. We go down there, and we're hitting insides. Like I just explained, <clears throat> I've never been to that place before, at least before then. I've hit A trains, but I would hit them right under here where uh, uh, the Museum of Natural History is. Okay. They'd park them right there in the winter on the middle tracks and run everything local. Yeah, I'd catch them right there, 80th Street and shit like that. But anyway... I'm up there, I'm hitting the insides and shit, and I notice, or the person I'm with, Meth, he wrote Meth. I was with Meth, and it was Shama and Arson. So, I'm right, and I could have sworn, like, because when you're in it, you have a catwalk here. It's hard to explain what a catwalk is, but it's, um, it runs along the side of the train. It's yeah. got the yellow barrel, if you ever look out the window, it's got like a, like a, a banister. And it's just yellow, and it's the catwalk. It's what you're supposed to walk on if you're exiting a train, like if you're stuck in the tunnel. They tell everyone to walk in single right. file down the catwalk. So anyway, yeah, I was inside the train, and the window in the catwalk, I could have sworn, like, the light broke. You know, like, the, I you had to adapt, you, know, you get adjusted to the light. Yeah. And it's like the light bulb, so if that light... You're like, you know what I mean? You just, yeah. You're just trained like that. You know, you know, after years of going through it, it's like someone's here you know what i mean and it's like and I'm the dude i was with that wrote meth he said the same thing m-e-t-h he's like oh yeah i hear something and so then we just remain very quiet you know we hear clink 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 so so by the time we went to get to the door the in between cars because we're inside the thing to open it they had already came up that side so i turned around started to run to the other side open that door they were coming up that side so then I ran over to the seat where the, the, to lift up the seat and pull a lever on the side door. Because hmm. if you open that under the seat, you lift it up, there's a lever. You pull it, and all the doors on one side of the train will open. Okay. So I did that, but I ran and jumped right out pretty much into their arms. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, so me and Meth got caught. I think Sham and Arson were actually on the other side, and they actually squibbed down and were familiar with the place. So they did their thing, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we got caught out there, and... Uh, meth, they took the Bowie knife, Shit. like a Rambo knife. Yeah. This is when the movie Rambo was pretty popular. People, Washington Heights, these guys run around with these things. And yeah. They have them on their sides and stuff. So they took them anyway. They caught him like this, right down. There. I thought they stabbed him in the eye. Oh, it was God. like so much blood, but almost like Alice Cooper. You know yeah. how it's the lines with the thing, but yeah, they caught him like right down his hole. Like a Nick from, Fury scar. Yeah, you know, that shit went, went. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Nick fucking Fury. Yeah. It went like this, but it went like that. And then it picked back up here. So it was like from here. And then since this part sucked in, it didn't get that part. It got here. Oh, okay. You know, and yeah, man. His shit, yo, his eyelid was like fucking slit right here Jeez. like it wasn't slit completely it's just right like where the eye would come out at the most cylinder point uh, you know yeah. what i mean uh, the most uh, yeah it was like yeah 
That was some weird shit. And they but got me, you. So they get, well, me, yeah. they grabbed my gold chain. I, this time, my brother used to work on 42nd Street, and he got me a gold chain with them. You know, in the porno theater, these yeah. people sell gold late at night, and he'd sell tick, uh, tokens from the theater. So he got me a gold chain. I was wearing it with a little clover on me. And he was in jail at the time, so I didn't want to lose the gold chain. And so I snatched it back. I put it in my mouth. I was trying to swallow it. No, but I couldn't get the fucking thing down. Then later now, I think about it. Imagine trying to shit that thing out. I was going to say, like a that's, chunk a, that's of fucking some, that's And it's a commitment. flat little thing, like the size of a quarter. But yeah. it's flat. I'm like, damn, that would have been some shit, you know. But I held it in my mouth. That's good. And they started prying my mouth on it. And I took my tooth out. Yeah. And it yeah, popped my tooth out. Like one of them had me, it was like 20 or 30 of these dudes, wow. man. And they were all little fucking kids. They weren't speaking English, man. Did they get the chain? Uh, yeah, no, no. Wow. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, they weren't speaking a word of English. So it's like, imagine a, like a bunch of little kids. They're all wearing sheepskins yeah. because yeah. that was that era. Like it was cold out. You know, they all had like yeah. sheepskins. Like, I was like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know Spanish. I mean, yeah, wow. so... <clears throat> me, they stuck it in my mouth, so I pry my mouth yeah. open. Then they did it again. So this piece here hung down like a French fry. Shit. And um, yeah, eventually they went back over to Tom Elliott. It was one of them here. I pushed him off to the side. I started to go this way. And at that point, they were just breaking the other way. I think maybe someone was coming, so we got to a hatch. Yeah. Like they literally, like. I freed myself from what I thought I was freeing myself, but in reality, they were just done and going, you know what I mean? So yeah. we just ran out and popped out the hatch right on Broadway, like 170-something street in Washington Heights. And um, as we popped out, we saw a shaman and arson, and we hopped in a cab, went down uh, shaman and arson. So, I mean, we were both bleeding like crazy, you know, this dude, uh, meth shit was sliced in, my shit was hanging down. I'm like... Trying to look at that shit like, yo, what the fuck, you know? Like, I remember feeling like it was like, like, woo. Hey, I'm like, yo, this is some shit. But yeah, <laughs> he's like, yo, bring us up. Hospital up there. I said, nah, man, take me down to Lennox Hill Hospital, man. We ain't dying or nothing. Yeah. You know, it's not like any major wounds or nothing. That's just like superficial shit, you know? Not like a juggler vein or something, yeah. you know? So yeah, I had to get me down to Lennox Hill Hospital wow. in this neighborhood, you know? And my father had a heart attack over that shit, man. <laughs> He's like, "Fuck, I gotta pay for this shit," you know. Like, I, you know, because he, we, they were divorced, you know. He was, a, he was actually a correction officer. My father. Oh, really? Yeah, believe it or not. And before that, you know, he was a sergeant in the military and shit. You know? Sure. Yo, you look at those dudes. You can even Google it on YouTube. Those guys, FK. Mm -hmm. And he became like some of the biggest drug lords up there, man. Really? Those are like the cocaine cowboy dudes, man. Okay. Like you know, if you ever hear about that shit up in Washington Heights. That's like them dudes, like, during the crack era, okay. epidemic and shit. Like, yo, them dudes grew up to be, like, some serious wow. shit, man. Yeah, them dudes weren't fucking around. I forget the name of their organization. I'm, I'm looking up, and you'll get the names yeah. of these people. There's a whole big YouTube thing I saw about it. The Dominican yeah. gang? Yeah, yeah, from up in the, uh, up there in Washington Heights. Like, they were, the, and they, they show you their tags, and them actually catching tags. Shit. Like, yeah, they're out there. Yeah, them dudes were no joke back in the days. Yeah, Washington Heights, yeah. It was like Zook, Z-O-O-K, Lance, uh, a few of them, man. I, that's the only guys I remember. Those are the main guys that were really putting it in, but there, there was like 20 or 30 of them dudes, man. They don't fuck around. They caught a lot of people out there. I heard they bashed Omni in the head with a shotgun, or was that John 1156? Okay. I know Joey TDS got caught out there. He told so me So these about guys, it. what were they doing? They were just like, they knew writers would come there, so they would just hang out and yeah. wait. Yeah, I ran down at the end. Uh, and, uh, like, I knew something was weird because I actually saw, like, furniture down there. You know what I'm saying? And, like, it looked like people chilled there. You, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know if it was homeless or not, but, no, nah, these dudes, they had, like, BMX bicycles down there and shit. Wow. Like, yeah, they would, that's, like, where they hang out. Like, I just didn't know, or, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I'll look it up. If I find it, I'll, yeah. I'll add it to the thing. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know, but those dudes literally hung out yeah. down there. They would call Gatto and Neo out there, okay. uh, which was, it like, MPC... Uh, yeah, Neo Nog. Uh, no yeah, G. Nation of Graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. Not that Neo, you, uh, that other Neo thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is old school Neo. 
The guy that was a cop. You know? Yeah, and Gatto was like a professional boxer. See, that's how we used to talk about how the rumors are. I don't know. Maybe he really was, you know, Gatto. Oh. Uh, he, yeah, he was supposed to be a dude, you know. He was knocking a lot of people. He ripped my friend's ear off, man, Jeez. Gatto. Yeah, form, Chinese form. He used to write Kaser also, and he wrote form. Yeah, Gatto ripped half his fucking ear off, man. Yeah, that's those are two dudes you don't hear about much. Gatto and Neo. Like, yeah, man, them motherfuckers were putting in work. Like, they catch you out there, they'll beat your fucking ass, man. That's a true story right there, man, yeah. Even before that, I used to do these big, yeah. huge fillings. They'd go over everyone, man. They didn't give yeah. a fuck, man. Yeah, Gatto, R.I.S. Yeah, well, he R. made a comeback, S. Neo, on the street, and then he... No, that's back. a different Neo. Because that's the R.I.S. one. And he was a cop, and he lost his pension, and all this crazy yeah, stuff. That's, yeah, that's the Neo I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But there's yeah. another Neo out there. That's not... I don't know. Oh, that, yeah, that's yeah. the bomber, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, I've actually met him, too. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. So, yeah, speaking of, like, because you mentioned, like, R.I.S., so, like... The late 80s, right, the city cleaned up a lot of the trains, but there was like a clean train movement, right? RIS, these guys, Van. Yeah, Cat. we were doing shit, so, too. So I, mean, so I was going to say, were you a part of that, or were you kind of Well, we just... were with them on it. I mean, at that well, point, our them. beef was actually squashed, okay. but um, we were doing our own thing. Uh, like, we would, the fucking layup, I could bring it, it's right here on 63rd right. Street. So the late you 80s, you were, the, you were hitting the clean trains. You were still yeah, we were doing clean trains, okay. but just... Uh, I would not say we were doing it the amount they were. Okay. We would do a, we would do like a whole car like once a year, right. twice a year. We'll get her hang out. Yeah, you know, I got yeah. this paint laying around. We would do insides too. This guy, uh, Barry Bear, he used to have okay. this art supply store on 54th Street. His father died. He gave us a bunch of red flow master. Mm. So we were going right into, on the insides of the clean trains. With and that's, that's the shit people save. They put that shit on their shelf. Like someone would never use Flowmaster. Like in the nineties, they had insides. It was yeah. I think there's a video. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it's a video or a photo where it's Ghost R I S. I don't know if he's ragging you on a train, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. no, we used to cross each so other. So what, what was yeah. the beef with R I S? Don't want to get into it fully, but I can tell you pretty much the way it happened. Just because I've actually, I, I haven't, I've actually met Ghost at one point, and okay. I never actually explained how the, what happened after that point. But um, how the whole thing started is, I've heard of Ghost, I've seen him up, never had no beef with him. I, you know, I've, once again, it's just like what we were talking about before. It's like, if you take it back, I really was just someone with my friends that was doing our own thing. We were like criminals that wrote graffiti. And, we never asked for, for nothing from anyone or did anything. Like, these people saw us and started some shit with us. And these people, I mean, like, J.A. and shit like that. J. A. Even, like, this guy Bind, he came out of nowhere and started crossing out Lace on the Sixes, and I started crossing them out, yeah. too. And the Lace met him, beat him up, and uh, then uh, there's some dude that was there that runs around. A bunch of crazy shit. But anyway... Man, that's the way it is. I would go about my business and live my life. And then, okay. was, like, on the sixes, I think, not with Bind and them, but with other people that were there before me, I can understand they're like, oh, what the fuck are you trying to take my line? Like, that's normal. You get me? That's what they're supposed to do. That's part of the game of graffiti. You know, if you start making a big presence on the line, people that are already hitting that subway line are going to get mad at you and they're going to come at you. You know? So, pretty much, that's what happened throughout my whole life. Yeah. Like, people, I don't know, I was just a target or whatever. But, yeah, like, to get to the ghost thing, this guy, J.A., just out of the blue, he started going over me. i never done nothing to that man. Never met him or anything like that. I met him once with Nash. And he actually learned, uh, you know, O.A., Nash. Mm -hmm. He does the A. Well, it, it's the J.A.A. -A before J.A. -A. So they were friends. They knew each other. And I met him once. I don't even think he was writing J.A. at that point. Or he was, or something like that, and I, hi, how you doing, or something. I didn't think my no one heard of the guy, really, you know? And then, yeah, out of the blue, he just started going over me. I met him again in a train tunnel down in Tishman, which is right here on 63rd Street. And he was making a lot of noise. Him and, I believe, Reese was there, and Omni. And they came stumbling into this train tunnel that we... We used to steal power tools with it before we actually found trains down there for like two or three years. And we still had people from this neighborhood that robbed the place for power tools. You get me? Like, we go and break into the gang boxes. Hell, we'll even take the gang box, you know? 
But what happens is these guys came down there and they started making a lot of noise and shit. And I went over to them and he said, yeah, yeah, I know you with Nash. And this. I'm like, yeah, you know, it was me, John, John. I think PK might have been there. KK might have been there. Uh, there was about, and all said and done, there was like eight or nine, maybe ten people writing graffiti that night. And these two or three people are on the other side and they're making noise and shit. So we got to check it out and make sure it's not cops and stuff. We look, we see it's other graffiti writers, you know. So we hop up on them. My friend John John is dead now, JJ. He's automatically thinking about robbing them. They got paint or something, you know. So as that's playing itself out, J.A. says, oh, I know you through Nash this time. I'm like, yeah, 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 I remember. We met over there near Grays Papaya, some shit, 72nd Street or something like that. And I shook his hand. I told everyone, leave him alone, you know. They're, they're, they're friends of a friend that I know and this and that. And don't go messing with them. You know, I don't want Nash to get mad at me or nothing like that. You get me? So then uh, I start making noise again. And I'm like, oh, come on. And at this point, like, Lace is doing a whole car. It's like 20-something cans of paint in all different colors. A big scheme of, like, uh, color scheme and just making the letters the same size. And a lot goes into this thing. You don't need a bunch of assholes on the other side. Like, yo, anywhere. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're TVS, if you're TFA, if you're RTW, I don't give a fuck what crew you are. You ain't going to put up with that shit, man. Like, if you got someone in there, if you're like an old advanced writer, which at that point we were, you know what I'm saying? And you're doing pieces, you don't want some assholes in there making a bunch of fucking noise. Like, it's just, that's not what you do. You go in all stealth, like a ninja almost, and you get out all quiet. The only fucking left thing behind is the smell and the shit that you leave on the subway. But these guys, they were in there hopping around, had big jugs of wine and shit. So uh, Lace is like pissed. He's like... Oh, come on, man. Like, they took them things that closed in between the doors and, like, just let them go. Like, bang, 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 And it's, like, echoing through the fucking tunnel. So he's telling uh, John John, yo, dude, go over there and take that. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because he'll go over there and just start stabbing the ass. You know what I mean? So I'm like, no, 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 chill, 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 chill. So I go over, I'm like, oh, dude, man, what the fuck? Like, hey, come on. I was like, you know, down below, there's a whole more trains that looks just like this place. Why don't you guys go down there? You know, you know, it's just like here. Like, you don't have to be right next to us. You know, you're causing problems. My friend's over there. You got two or three people doing whole cars. They're dumping out. They got these outlines in their hand. They're sitting there like artists at a fucking easel with 20, 30 cans of fucking paint. They're wasting it. They had to run around neighborhoods and steal this fucking paint. You know what I mean? And then you got some assholes that are drunk just banging around on the other side. Just, oh, look at me. No, I'm dead fucking serious. Like, yo, that shit could go bad real fucking quick, man. Uh, yeah, you got people dumping out. They're investing five, six, eight hours hours of that time it's almost like punching in in a clock and punching out like you sit there sometimes six eight hours man you'd be falling asleep i'd be falling asleep fucking hanging out with him keeping him company sometimes lace and shit like that yeah and I, all of a sudden this dude's like making all this noise like he's already got like 20 something cans investing in it maybe four hours of work you know what i'm saying it's like yo nah man that shit ain't happening just go downstairs there's no problem with that you got more trains we're not being mean or nothing it's just they're being a dick they're burning the place they're yeah. making the place hot yeah, people hear that shit they start smelling the paint you know what i mean the cop hears ding bong and he's on the cat on the station where the trains pull in and he hears bing bong so it's walking at the end of this tunnel all the Start smelling spray paint. Like, it's just a dick fucking amateur move. I'm sorry. That's what was going on. So I told him, yo, go downstairs, man. I was like, yo, this shit, yo, you, I'm telling you, dude, please. I'm like, you're going to get fucked up, man. You're going to get hurt. Like, I really didn't want to be a dick because they were good friends with Richie Nash. Oh, hey. You know, and I got nothing but the utmost respect for that dude. Nash has showed me some of the craziest layups. I wouldn't have had half the fucking graffiti done that I've done on the subways if it wasn't for Nash. So, yes, I, I was really cautious of how I was handling this situation with J.A. So I told him, downstairs, you got a bunch more trains down there, man. And I don't know what happened, I, but I did tell him, like, the next time, like, just if we come over, I told him, run. I really did. I told him, just fucking run like you've never ran before. I'm like, if you hear us coming back over, run. <laughs> like, I'm dead serious. That's like the last words I said to them. And then, I don't know, they left or whatever. We didn't hear no more noise from them. Then Andrew Lace, he does a whole car on the twos, I mean, on the, 
four and a five at this point switches over, but it's the two and the five up further. But in the winter, they had parked these twos and fives on the, the express track on the east side, like where the four and the five runs uptown here along the sixth train. But from 28th Street, 32nd Street, right from 14th Street on the middle tracks, they parked these fucking trains, the double sets. Now, in the tunnels, like 28th Street to 32nd Street, they built these sound barriers, which are like these uh, cinder block walls that go about this high. So if an hour, like someone that's Andrew Lace, he's like almost 6'3", he's 6'2 and a half or something like that. So him standing, he can literally do whole cars right there in the tunnel. Like that. So that's what he did. He did a huge whole car, a big Lace. He, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a Cascade Green 3D. Uh, it was all silver filled in. I think it had some kind of purple in the background. Anyway, fucking uh, goes by, it pulls out, and it's running, and it's got like OM fillings on it, like outlines, just OM, 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 OM. And we're like, what the fuck is that? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I see like a JA, and I'm like, that's that dude or I, I, that, that, that we met that time. And he's like, yo, Rob, man, this shit's like a dick move, man. You know, like, what the fuck? Like, why would it? I was like, I don't know. I was like, they're lucky they got out of there. He's yeah. like, yo, yeah. And th that point right then and there, I realized I made a mistake. They should have just sent John John over there and do what he had to do and done. You know what I mean? Like, I really did just try and be a good guy about it. So then after that, these guys, this is getting to ghost. So now these guys are writing graffiti, this, that, and doing that thing. And Nash, because this is during the time of like a regular phone, in your house. And Nash calls me up and he's like, yo, um, Jay and then we're down in this train tunnel, Tishman, like I said, right here on 63rd Street. They bumped in a bunch of these writers like Ghost and TK and this one and that one. And they said they're going to kill you and they caught him and they, they uh, beat him up with some crazy shit or another, you know. <clears throat> so he's like, yo, we got to go. And I'm like, man, fuck them, man. And he's like, why are you ain't? I said, I can't fuck. I, said, I figured I knew PK, uh, Ross, and I knew all them dudes from Astoria. So I figured, to me, Queens is Queens, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I figured, you know, these guys in Astoria, what are those dudes from Woodside or something? They're further up on the Seven Line or some shit. Like, they'll talk to someone, they'll talk to someone, and it's nothing to worry about. Uh, so Nash is like, yo, but you're not. I'm like, dude, just look at this dude. J.A. was like a yuppie back then. He would wear, he's a yuppie. He's a billionaire, a millionaire, whatever. So he would have, like... Uh, preppy clothes on, like beige, like docker, almost like the color pants you have on, you know, with like loafers and shit like that, like a, like a fucking Tiger Woods, like a golfing <laughs> shirt and shit, you know, so I, I asked Nash, I said, dude, he said, yo, but they robbed J.A. and them, and I'm thinking about what, like, what we want to do to that motherfucker after what he did to Lace's whole car, you know, so I told Nash, I said, dude, look at the dude, man, what the fuck would we do if we bumped into that dude in the train tunnel? We'd rob his ass, man. Yeah. He's a herb. He's a victim, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what the motherfuckers are supposed to do. They're supposed to rob his fucking ass. I mean, that's the way I saw it. And uh, Richie's like, yeah, I guess you're right. But what happened is they somehow caught him out there. And pretty much he bought them spray. This is what I heard through reliable sources. Okay. And they became friends with him. Okay. So then they all started going over me. But J.A. himself had never, ever went back in that train tunnel again. He just started doing the streets. And then that's like yeah. when he got up in the streets a lot. And that yeah. was like 88, 89. Yeah, by the time the trains were dead, he already had all the streets on smash. And like most of the graffiti writers from down below that were writing on the subways, most of them quit. You know, yeah. they all just fell off. And, yeah, so... You know, um, like, Easy Jaws and them, they were having it hard even before that. There's someone else that had a vision before everything. Like, they saw the trains going down. They knew the move was the street. Cats and Terrors, you know? yeah. yeah. So let's transition to that. So a couple of those guys who you caught that beef with in that tunnel, some of the RAS, so actually, Jay would, you know, XTC later on. So... Transitioning into the street, right? J.A. transitioned to the street. Some of those other guys did. But you also did. So how how yeah. was your transition into the street? What was your approach? Let's say 1990 forward. Well, uh, 89, I, like I put on my podcast there, that picture's like Chippendale's rooftop. Like, 89? I was okay. always doing like big stompers right. in the streets, like facing the Queensboro Bridge. Facing Queens, facing Roosevelt right. Island, shit like that with Baron and them. I actually, the blue one, I actually used, and I was still in high school at that point. 
I used um, the paint that I stole from Yankee Stadium. When they painted all Yankee Stadium that blue, yeah. that uh, R&D is the same exact blue. It's huge. And I stole like buckets of that shit. And I hid it in a train tunnel. And I just kept coming up and grabbing it. And, and I used it whenever I needed it. When they painted that whole Yankee Stadium thing. Yeah. That was like 88, 89. Yeah, and you did those. You did also the spots. What is that on the East River there, right? Yeah. The, you did the Punisher with yeah. the, the mousey kind of character. Yeah, yeah. And the then Punisher you did the, the rat. Mouse. That was. And then I don't the rat remember. also. Yeah, I'm trying to think what year that was. You see, um, originally under that, there was an RD blockbuster that I did in 83. I have pictures of it. It says 83. And that's this, uh, that same period, maybe 84, I did another blockbuster. It was actually on a subway the same way okay. as before I was bringing the 3D in. But that thing, all right, the Punisher wall. That's what it's, it's nicknamed. People call it yeah, the, the Punisher, Punisher wall. wall. I did that the year the Punisher came out with his own comic book. It was like 86, 87. Oh, that far back. Wow. Yeah, Marvel. I did that when Marvel gave him his first own comic book. His real run. Like, he had the four, the journal series, uh -huh. which was four or five comics. And originally, he started out in the 1970s. He shot Spider-Man or something, or Daredevil and shit like that. And then in 86, 87, that's when he came out with his own comic book. And that's the year I did it, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's when so I did that. Yeah. Wow. And what about the rat? Because that's a... Huge piece. Now, the rat it was like was around, feet high, you said, the rat yeah. itself. Now, the rat was around the time Binky and the Brain came out. Oh, okay. Binky and the Brain, so Brain, that was the 90s, Brain, then. Brain, Early Brain. Mid -90s. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's, and that's the third time I did it. Wow. So I've done that. Originally, I'd done it also back when the trains were still going, like 87, 88. Wow. I did it. There was a bunch of paint that I had laying around, like house paint. Like, you walk around this neighborhood, like on a Wednesday, people throw shit out. Like, I'd grab all this paint, and over the wall on 62nd Street, there's a wall. We had a little clubhouse in We just kept throwing buckets and buckets mm -hmm. of paint. I had, like, 10, 15 buckets, like gallons of fucking paint. Pour it all in big buckets and just drag it down and just do the river. Just did a big, huge RD. And it said 357, the first yeah. one. The first time, no, yeah. The first time I did it, it was all white and the 357 was in gray. And then I had a bunch of scraps. I went down to Tishman, the layup, because it's right there. The layup to Tishman is right there. We had a room. Like, instead of leaving spray paint cans all over the layup and making the place hot so the cops know people are writing there, we had a room where we would throw all the paint in it. Like, we'd literally go through that layup and clean it up. Like, when other assholes would come through and just leave cans of paint all over, we had a room. Like, we'd fill up a Jansport bag or, like, a fucking yeah. mail bag at one point, and we'd take it all and dump it in that room. I'd take a bunch of that paint, and I actually climbed up, did a bunch of bubbles of all different colors on it. And, yeah, that one got crossed out by yeah. uh, J.A., Chino, wow. Date, a bunch of different people. So with, like with, 20, productions, people went over with productions that size, right? So outside of the trains, outside mm. of train tracks, at that time, was that a thing that a lot of people were doing? Like, I'm going to find no, a spot? No, 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 right? No. I, so I, what I was your idea behind it, that? As far as it goes to New York, man. that was the biggest two letters that, like ever done. Yeah. Right? Like in Manhattan for a very long time. And no, five boroughs for a long yeah. time. But I do believe people start painting bigger. Yeah. So at this point, maybe not in all five boroughs, but as far as it goes with Manhattan Island, yeah, yeah definitely. But I mean, I'm sure there's someone out in Staten Island in yeah. the middle of nowhere or right. fucking uh, yeah. Brooklyn or some shit, like near some graveyard or some shit. Because yeah. uh, now, like, even if you see like a stomper filling like a half a block, it's still kind of impressive, right? But I could imagine back then pulling that shit off. I mean, well, let me tell you been. something, man. I ain't use all that fancy shit with fat caps, man. That shit didn't yeah. exist. Yeah, like if, thing, when right? you see them things I've done on the highway on the FDR drive, like under John J. Park, the R is bigger than this wall. I did all that shit with those cheap silvers that you had steal. Wow. Town and country, <laughs> town and country. I steal that shit from Lambstons and wow. Woolworths. Yeah, I'd steal fucking like thirty or forty of them fucking things. Yeah. You know, but I'm not gonna lie. I would have eight or nine people filling it in with me. Yeah, I I, I do the R, and JJ would already be filling this part in as I'm coming down late. Uh, you know, but the fucking thing, it's like you didn't have fancy caps and mm -hmm. shit like that that would fit on that. Like you know, and it was right like this. Sometimes it only writes like two fingers, man. You know, it's like, it's like filling the shit in with a fucking crayon or a magic marker or something. Yeah. And they were huge, man. Yeah, and the characters, you know, you did the um, that, and I know you did the Doctor Doom. Yeah, so, I did so, all, yeah. 
a lot of that is like cheap spray paint. Because nowadays you get the thin line cans. You yeah, all that, all that stuff. All yeah. that shit is old, old, old. The, the one that was in the Espo book, I did that when McLemore was a police officer, which I think I did pretty good. That was like 86, 87. Yeah. I did that because he was getting transferred out of the precinct or something like that. He was a cop that would patrol the park there, okay. and he was cool. Like, if we were swimming at night, he'd be like, dude, just, you know, don't be breaking bottles acting like assholes. If you go in there, just take a dip and come out. It's okay, you know? He was a good cop, so when he was out of that precinct, I did it. It wasn't legal. I did it at night, you know? I did an RD tag, like on the badge or something like that, I remember. So let's talk about the 90s, street bombing. You mm. know, you fully transition away from the trains and everything is about bombing the streets, basically, at this point, right? Unless yeah. you want a, the Vandal Squad knocking at your door every day. You basically, and even then, they're coming after you. But what, what was that transition like and... What was like your your mo when you were on the streets? Strictly tags, tags everywhere. Yeah, fill-ins or straight letters. What was like the most I, important? Well, my mindset was this: I stayed with the trains until the bitter end. Like most lines were cleaned up, and yeah. I would still fuck around with clean trains. I'm always trying to like crack that egg, you know, like. There's got to be a way. Like, I've tried to, like, supermarket ink on the floors of the trains, under the seats on the floors. Maybe they won't mop it enough. The supermarket ink, it's almost like a dye. Yeah. You know, we thought all types of crazy shit that we could think of, you know, to write on them. And, you know, in the midst of that, I would start hitting on the streets and shit like that and just admitting the fact that the subways are done, you know, and I would just start, I just literally would go through the insides like I would on a six. I would go down each block. Like, just, like, tag, 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 tag. Like, when I'm on the sixes, like, that's what I mean. Like, from writers from back then when they were hitting the insides and doing shit, it's like, yo, you're doing filling after 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 filling. Like, the same with tags. Like, when I'm on the inside of a car, I get 20, 30 tags in each car. I'm right on 100 and something cars. That's just one fucking night. You know what I mean? Like, that's a lot of fucking graffiti, man. Yeah. It's like you start getting, like, that Copal syndrome and shit before it even fucking existed. I'm telling you, like, yo, for real, like, it gets to a point where you just, like, chill. Like, I sit in a car, like, after, like, 30, 40 insides and fill up my marker and shit. I just sit there and, like, smoke a joint and, like, just chill. I'd actually, I, a few times I actually dozed off and, like, <laughs> you know, like, and not for like long periods of time or nothing, but literally I'd be like, oh shit, yeah. I'd just hop back up. <laughs> and that's like out in the street. It's not like that, obviously. You can't. Like, you just, with the tunnels and doing the trains and shit, it's just getting in and getting out. Everything else, it don't matter. You ain't going to get seen in there. You know what I'm saying? It's a matter of not getting seen getting to them and yeah. not getting seen getting out. Once you're in there, you can just as much paint as you can bring in. You can dump. It's just as long as there's places to write on it, you know, yeah. like subways. But, yeah, after, so I really did treat the streets like that. Like, I would have, like, four or five cans of paint on me. Like, i just go down. I, I would do, dump out four or five on tags in, yeah. like, ten blocks. Like, that's a lot of tags. You know what I'm saying? It's like, a, it's, yeah. I mean, towards the end of my career, I would, seven or eight cans of white rust-oleum went just yeah. towards, like, 2000 or something like that. Pushing into 2000 when I was doing all that big shit with Ske, and I was also hitting the streets with just. I was using the white rust with the orange bubble caps. I go through seven or eight, and I, that's, like, the limit. You got me? I, it's, like, seven or eight cans... Ten years before that it was nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you're pushing into like 2000. Yeah, it's like in 90. Yeah, you could definitely just dump out much more. It's just people didn't give a fuck. You know, it was a different yeah. era of time. But so after that, it was like I'd be happy with dumping out seven cans, and that's just on tags. Yeah. You know, I'm like gate after gate after gate, a lot of gates because of the crack epidemic yeah. and shit. You know. As far as tags go, your tag is so recognizable. It's like. Uh Basically, it's been a part of the landscape in New York City for like 30 years now. So when people see that, they might not even be interested in graffiti itself. Yeah. Like we're talking about civilians now. They're going to see that RD. Now, they might not know what it means or what it is, but it's in a lot of people's subconscious, whether they know it or not. Yeah. When you were doing those tags, did you ever do it in that sense? Like, you know, people that don't even know graffiti know what the fuck is up. Or was it just about you and other graffiti writers? Or did you ever notice notice that i'll tell you 
I was down in Chelsea once, and I was hitting a bunch of trucks. And Chelsea used to be hot for trucks. It yeah. would be like 30, 40 trucks on a block, like 27, 28 Street, 9, like under where it's down the skylight. Yo, you could like murder trucks and like king the fucking truck game in like a couple of nights, you know. I remember I was riding on the truck, and had some lady, like she was a drunk lady, and she came out, it was like right on like 28 and 9, and her and her friends, uh, she was drunk. She said, oh my God, it's the ice cream guy. <laughs> and I'm like, ice cream? Like, I had the can. I, I, I don't know. I'm doing a tag. And she called me the ice cream guy. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you're the one that does the ice cream. I'm like, that's not an ice cream. Oh, wow. She's I like, see I see that everywhere. So then, like, because the truck had a lot of graffiti on yeah. it, I moved over onto the side of the truck. And I did. she's like, yes, it's an ice cream. And I realized, like, the, I thought she was confusing me because there is someone that does a fucking ice cream. Okay. You know what I mean? There was someone back then, like Billy Mayer, that would do them little dogs all over the place he would do them with a paintbrush the dogs uh, like, uh, yeah yeah, yeah the, those little that's fucking right, mr. Softy. yeah <laughs> but yeah mr softy yeah. that's what he is i think yeah there's a dude i don't know how old that mr softy is but for, for him there was another one so what was i don't it, know the if d? it's the same one did she thought the yeah, d was a cone the d and i was wow. like yeah but yeah. i can't but a cone would be this way so i yeah. see it everywhere yeah. you know she was all right. drunk and she like hit me on i right. see it everywhere and yeah. she hit me on the chest and I was yeah like, so like after over 30 years or whatever doing that you know how many people are this this gotta be there's gotta be hundreds of thousands of people maybe millions that have seen that Probably just not. operating every day. In well, you figure city. how many so people I find come in pretty, and out of the yeah. city, and I had the city like I would go yeah. seek out the spots that people yeah. would see, like without trying to see, yeah. like right in their face. So yeah, for what, eight million people coming in. And it's in wild. Out of the city. It's crazy what what two letters can do, you know. And it just seeps into the landscape, and people rem remember it. You know, they might not, they don't know what it is, but they remember it. Um, in the nineties. Can you talk about the the atmosphere around graffiti in the '90s? There was a lot of bombers. There was a lot of crews. There was a yeah. lot. It was obviously the '90s were more violent than they are in New York City today. You had a lot of things to worry about. Vandal Squad was a lot you more know, active. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people say that. Uh, oh, the, to going back. And I mean. I was really, like I said, like the poster child for like the broken windows theory. Robbing, stealing, breaking into cars, stealing motorcycles, bicycles, everything, writing graffiti. You know, I was the bro the theory. You know, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. And I think that what's going on out there now, it's... I mean, now people are starting to scheme on money. I hear people like breaking in for diamonds yeah. and they, they broke into a jewelry yeah. store. You got, yeah. you know, boom, boom. Like that is yeah. the kind of shit I that I think a lot of it might on. be post-pandemic bullshit. It's still yeah. lingering on. It's probably but not going to go is, away is, for a while. Those type of crimes were very common back then. Like big loot schemes. Right. Yeah, a couple so, yeah. million dollars worth of diamonds. Or this is getting out. That shit was normal. But all this weird shit about like tacking old people with hammers and shit, that's like fucking unheard of to yeah. me, man. Like you can't, nah, that shit ain't, we ain't get down like that in the 80s. Well, man. you, you get do that, some shit you know, like that, you're yeah. a little bitch. Well, you bro. get that when neighbor, Like seriously, like if you fuck with like a little kid yeah. or like an old lady, you're like a little yeah. bitch. Like seriously, back then, like that's not cool. Like you'll be outcasted from whatever neighborhood yeah. you're from. I don't give yeah. a fuck. Definitely around here, we don't fuck around with shit like yeah. that. And like no one will talk to you again. Like you right. would just be done. Well, like if you're like uh, fucking with like an old man or an old lady or yeah. a child. Yeah, or, like, of course. Yeah. I think as cities change, old the old guard. Moves I mean, even out, in prisons, you know, when and even in prisons, you do in. shit like that. They still go by that old that yeah. you know that old rule, man. Yeah. Like you know, none of that that chomo shit, none of that damn beating on old people or women and stuff. Yeah, like that didn't. Fly. I mean, uh, you know that Netta Nusbin, I remember uh, with, uh, what's his face, with the little girl, and the girl died, and they, I believe they started that law, right? Joel Steinberg? The head of Nussbaum? Lisa Steinberg, head of Nussbaum. Yeah, head of Nussbaum. Yeah, Lee yeah. Steinberg, head of Netta Nussbaum. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. But yeah, a lot changed after that, you know what I'm saying? But it's like... Really? I mean, I think a lot of domestic violence would have existed as far as it goes with, like, in the households, like, the okay. man, like, me, man, you, woman, yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that. But as far as it goes with, uh, like, um... Street bombing the weird, in the 90s. Like, and even, like, that. serial killer shit really wasn't popping yeah. off back then. I mean, of course, you had that shit, you know, but well, not, like, yeah, yeah. at that level, right. you know? Yeah. It was a new thing you know like so what was 70s. what was your biggest issue with with bombing in the 90s on the streets was it beef was it i mean you say I, that's I mean, like I, I had problems with real people like those like graffiti writers like they spin on their head and they listen to break dance music uh -huh. and, like they, they, they were never a threat to me I, I really never looked at them as any type of like thing to fear of any any way shape or form okay i i, I never yeah like i mean you know i was out there robbing and stealing and shit like i was telling you you know yeah 
past, like you, you, you cause problems with people, you know, you, you, you got other things to worry about. So I was always alert anyway, you know, someone that might recognize me from stealing that motorcycle or some shit like that, yeah. or, you know. During the 90s, who were some of the writers that maybe you didn't know them, but was there anyone out there that was doing it up that you respected? Uh, There's a couple people, yeah. Um... Like all them dudes from the Bronx. Okay. Like I affiliate like Manhattan and the Bronx. Like it's like an old school thing in people's minds. Like Queens and Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, Staten Island kind of just doesn't even fit in the picture. Although I actually affiliate Staten Island writers more with the Upper West Side writers from back oh, okay. in the days, like TVS and shit like that. You know. But um, yeah, what were we saying? Like writers that you respect in the. 90s. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it, uh, Easy, Jaws, of okay. course, Josh Five, Vifa, um, uh, Vanel, it was this dude, Vanel 3M, uh, he used to go over me a lot, he was probably a very worthy opponent, yeah, okay. Vanel 3M, he was up a lot, uh, <coughs> um, uh, yeah, all the dudes up in the Bronx, Rule, Tabor, Bester, Rick, Rhea, because they were hitting the twos and fives like Rick and Rhea, and they also started hitting the streets. Tyke, Tyke has a fucking amazing career, man. Tyke, you know, you don't hear no one talk about that dude, Tyke, T-Y-K-E, mm -hmm. also T-I-K-A. Yo, that dude, yeah, utmost respect yeah. for that dude, man. He's really been out there for like a long fucking time, man. And yeah, he, he started destroying shit. He's done huge whole cars. <laughs> Big, huge whole cars. He's done it all, man. Big blockbusters, streets, a lot of fillings. Yeah, good writer, man. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're talking about people that just transitioned to the streets and who was up in the streets at that point, right? Even in uh, general, Chrome maybe, Mag, Chrome Mag would right, get yeah. up a little bit. Um, Even in general, let's say they weren't they weren't train writers. Let's say just in general. Yeah, the, the, the guys that just, got started. They were up in the 90s. at that point, right? In yeah, the nineties, they got yeah. started in the nineties. Um, I met Bruce and NATO. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were with this girl, Debs, or Debbie or something, and my girlfriend was Deborah, Deborah, when I used to write Robert Loves Deborah, I think you were just mentioning that, I don't know, like one of the films you saw back in the days, but yeah, I met those guys, they were like getting up around my neighborhood a little bit, Okay. You know? and they would push this crew R.A., which yeah. was my friend's side, R.A. So, yeah, that, that was pretty interesting, and I met them at one point. And never met them again. NATO I've actually bumped into a few more times in life. I hung out with him once or twice. Yeah, he had a lot of seven-line rooftops. Yeah, 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 NATO, yeah. Rooftop action, that's what he used to yeah. write. I think films. like 10 years ago or something like that, maybe any longer. I, I don't know, somehow we were talking to each other or something like that. I haven't heard from him again. Um... I, on the west upper, upper Harlem, like too nice. Too nice. Um, like it's probably easier if I did it that way, like just start at the top and go down. Uh, yeah, like the Bronx, you had uh, Jest, TVT, um, uh, all them dudes he hung out with. I mean, PJ, Scene, they were doing highways. <coughs> Uh, Sess, Yes, Wayne, um, uh, yeah, and all right, and you're going to get into Harlem, you start talking about Joves, you know, Jover, Joves, Aver, Acer, uh, Spook, uh, 131, um, TDO, all those guys, Spawn. Har, Shop, uh, those are the Washington boys, and you had the Mad Madison mob. Um, then you, you also had TFT, which was also, I knew them guys from the subways. TFT, which was also like Tabor, TFT, maybe Louie and them, like that whole group from the Bronx. But I knew Blake, not the writer Blake, but his name was Blake, and that was Cash TFT. I did. I wrote a lot of graffiti with him. Um, Spoonie, TFA, TFT. Um, 
All right, yeah, the 131 guys were putting it in. Then into Isaacs, you had Demo 3. Um, those Irish kids from Isaac houses. Uh, and you go west, you had J.A. and them. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess Washington Heights would be Smith and Sane and then yeah. J.A. down further. And you go east, you have me and my people like J.J. and that whole screw of people. Then you also have costs somehow around there, but then he would also wind up somewhere in Chelsea, okay. like uh, near the Flatiron area. Like uh, he was up a lot. Cost Doc K R T Coster K O S T E R Coaster. He used to push K R T. You know he was writing D three Sammy when he was in Rikers Island, writing letters back and forth, and the letter came back one with Coaster three five seven. Uh, uh, K-R-T on it. That's K-O-S-T-E-R. Yeah, he was up a lot. Um, all right, and you go to Chelsea, Dev, Nice, Niso, CM, Criminal Minded. Oh, I've seen him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's up a lot. A lot of, lot. Tunnel, lot of tunnels. Yo, yeah. people don't realize that fucking dude is <laughs> up so fucking much. Yeah. It's just no one sees it. Like, they, they think... Like me, with the tunnels down below, I got a lot of fucking tunnels, but it's like people don't really pay attention to it. Like in the streets, it's cars, and a lot of graffiti writers nowadays, they drive around in cars, so they don't take the subway. So I believe when you hit the subway system nowadays, you don't get the credit you used to get, you know, because now I guess, well, graffiti writers in themselves are older people, they're not children no more. You know, back in the days, it was kids, they normally quit once they hit yeah. a certain age, you know. But yeah, so yeah, NISO's up like a motherfucker, dude. You know, every time they're on the news, like there's some kind of water yeah, yeah. main break, or <laughs> you got a fucking coma walking through yeah. the tunnel, boom, NISO. Hell, you got me jumping around with that girl, Anna, doing fucking blockbusters and shit. Man. NISO, NISO everywhere, man. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And that's not just one line or one side of town. That's like the Upper West Side, the Upper East Side, like all over the fucking place. Yeah, you mentioned the cost Bronx. before. I want to ask yeah, you cost about KRT. So cost, he goes back to. That's uh, CO cost. Uh, yeah, CO cost. Yeah, cost yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm speaking of. Yeah. yeah, so he goes back to the subways, and then in the 90s, he starts the wheat pasting campaign with Revs. Yeah. They get bagged, but then Revs. I want to ask you about Revs. I don't know he, much about any of that. I lost complete like contact. Like, right. I knew cost up until like 1989. Uh huh. And then, like, the trains died. He went his way. I went my way. Right, like, right. We, it's not like cell phones and shit. Yeah. It's like, I just no, did, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't bump into him right. again until many years later when I'm stealing from the comic book convention. And, uh, you know? So I don't know nothing. Yeah. I mean, I read newspapers right, right, and yeah, stuff, yeah. but I, right. I don't know. I Revs. As far I, as Revs, like, so they get arrested, but Revs does his own thing. Now he starts writing these things in the tunnels, his life story. He starts doing the iron sculptures. What is your opinion on that? I like it. I like all that shit, but I, the thing I didn't like is in the tunnels. Okay. Like, just that weird shit that he's writing. Like, yeah. I, it's just, it's almost like with Wombat. It's like, where are you going with this? Like, <laughs> no, like Wombat with that weird twisted shit. It's like, where, like, what are you trying to, like, I read it and I kind of went into it on a live and I, it, I didn't put it because I was just testing out my live on my YouTube, so I never actually posted it, but so I could talk about it, but... It's like, you know, it's just oh, all my friends are dead. It's like, yeah, you're trying to go there, like, be gory and dark. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, like, it's so, like, obvious. It's like an image, you know, yeah, like, oh, yeah. look at me. I'm all fucked up. My friends are all yeah. dead. Like, boo-hoo. Who the fuck's friends aren't dead, man, or, or aren't going to die? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you, you know, the older you get, the more fucking friends are going to die. You look at me sitting here right now. All these people I'm talking about, JJ's dead, John John, uh, uh, Frankie Gator's dead, uh, fucking everyone that, like, I know pretty much, except for D3 and Lace. They're still hopping around, you know? But yeah, it's like so. I, I was a little too emo for you, but you like the aesthetic. Yeah, but it's just it's you too like on the, the nose. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. me? It's too. It's like the rebel thing is cool when it didn't exist, but now everyone's like trying to be that one. Like right. they're it's almost like trying to hit that new meme, uh, right. or like trying to post that new thing that uh, that gets all the subs. You follow me? It's like it's just so obvious. Like I'm a okay. fucked up person yeah, yeah, like yeah. look at me ooh, ooh, ooh. you know it's just it's it's so played out it's old you know <laughs> I, I mean that's the way i see it and that, that's yeah that's the way i look at that right. it's just it's, it's not good i don't like it okay but you like it aesthetically like there was something you did like about it you said 
You said you liked it before. What? The, the stories in the tunnels. Yeah. I, I, no, I said I like Rev stuff. I just don't like the you stories. You don't like the stories. Yeah, oh, okay. They, he well, writes what about, in the tunnels. Okay. I, what about I don't the like that stuff. The sculptors, I think it's fucking cool. Yeah. It, it's amazing shit. Okay. You know? uh, I, I think it's a brilliant idea. It's like people wouldn't even want to rip that shit down. Yeah. You know, they would look at it like, wow, that's cool. People probably try and steal it, but uh, yeah, I like that. I just don't like the whole things, like the pages of a diary, because okay. obviously it's not his diary. Yeah. Like, if you really read this shit, it's it's almost like uh, like Eminem writing rhymes or some okay. shit. Like, and it's like just the way you're trying to go, like, um, uh, weird with the lettering, the font. It's like a serial killer font. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, I hear you saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. just it's fake uh, to me. You know, I mean, every art comes from the heart, and, it, it, and it's interpreted by the viewer and all that shit. But like, come on, man. Right. Like, you, yo. I, Maybe it's just me, but I'd rather you just take that shit into a huge fucking revs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, with all that paint, you did a b yeah. square block, but you figure each line. All right. R. One, two, three, four, five. E. One, two, three, four. Uh, so it's nine strokes. So you figure one, two, three, four, five. Like, he could have did, like, by the time he painted that whole wall yeah. with those strokes of fucking, each one of them strokes... He could have done, like, four huge fucking yeah. revs. Just huge revs. It says everything you want to say, right? Like, you don't want people to know that your uncle stuck his finger up your ass, right? Uh, and, and, and that's my personal opinion. Right. But then again, that's yeah. what it is. He's trying to be cute. Uh, right, uh, Like right, the right. bone collector. If anything, if you anything. You get me? Yeah, it's yeah. like the bone collector. Like I hear you saying. Like, yeah. he, like he sews women's mouths right. up. That's why, if you ever see the picture, I wrote R.D. Kill the Horror uh, Hooker yeah, here yeah, in yeah, 1987. Yeah. I wrote that because it's right next to that thing. And right, this dude, right. Ball, was... I didn't even do that in 1987. I did that in, like, 2007 or something with Ball. So I was like, I just wrote it just to... Like a mockery of what he's doing, like a, like R.D. killed a hooker here, 1987. But he yeah. didn't get in the picture, but right yeah. there is the Revs all thing, right. you know? So, yeah, all right. So it's coming off as a little contrived, do you think? Maybe yeah. a little too... Okay. So, but all that aside, it was something different. So I want to transition to something... Now, the we paste and all that shit are yeah. fucking amazing. When he does the big rollers, yeah. when he hangs out with Cost. When he hangs out with Cost, he does great. Yeah, that's the best way. Yeah. When he hangs out with like Espo and does all that stupid shit like that, dude, that he fucked the kid's head up, man. Like yeah. if he would have stayed away from that or actually like did a diary or something, or, okay. yeah, then yeah, like if it serves a purpose other than some gooba gooba, yeah. you know, it's like it's not saying anything. Like I sat there trying to decipher this shit for 20 fucking minutes. Actually, yeah. Baal was like, yo, hold up, I'm trying to read it. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm like... It's a good way to get hit by a yeah, fucking we're train, doing the, You know, we're doing tunnels, like tag after tag. And yeah. I'm like, yo, come on, man. This shit's crazy, man. It's bullshit. Who gives a fuck? Maybe that's why I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah, it's right. Plus, it takes up space. Like, I'm well, doing my true. tags, and yeah. all of a sudden, I got to stop and keep going forward. And, yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't like it. Not that. I, it should just do revs. Like, that's yeah. the tag, you know? Now, I want to ask you about something else as far as... Um, people doing things differently or because you're a Manhattan guy. So like in the late nineties, early two thousands, right? Downtown Manhattan, you had like these younger crew, like let's say Iraq, right? Say ears not, they started doing this thing with the acid etch, right? You went downtown to the lower East side to wherever, all these fucking glass storefronts, they got this fucking acid burned into the, you know, it was pretty crazy. Um, I remember seeing a lot of that. I was hanging out around there as a teen and seeing all these yeah. fucked up windows. And I was yeah, like, wow. I witnessed it too. Yeah. I was like, wow, that shit is pretty foul. But I guess it's vandalism, right? They were getting up. What is your opinion on that Do you, when you see something like that? <coughs> what, what's your opinion on that? Those Iraq guys? I saw the acid it. Etch. I actually met that uh, um, ear snot. But I saw it. I liked it, but I knew it wasn't going to last. Okay. Like, I, I knew that there were, like... I thought it was cool, but I knew that, like, a store, especially some of the stores, they were doing that shit there. Yeah. Like, you know, they were hitting, like, high-end stores. And obviously, they're going to come and fix a window. But I, I thought it was good, like, in other ways in my mind. Like, for instance, there's a bike store. They charged me too much, and Dover and Lace was making fun of me to f f fix the bottom bracket. Yeah, you know, I swear, I broke that fucking window like three or four times. You know, and, and it's kind of like, you know, I would stick a, a fucking piece of rebar in between the gate and pull it. And it's kind of like thinking in that level, I like that, that acid bad shit. Okay. Like, I could take care of shit a lot quicker than having to run up and make a bunch of noise in the future if I'm ever put in a situation like that. But as far as it goes with writing graffiti, I, 
it's almost like you're doing it just to antagonize the store right. and society, which is cool. I'm with it, yeah. but I don't. I think it's a method of actually getting up. I don't think it was good. Now on the subways with that shit, yeah. was amazing. Like what they were doing on the subway windows, smash. And Smash, bet yeah. and JA even right bet TFV right JA when they um, uh, uh, FE right those dudes they had that uh, shit on the windows man like yeah. they started making news re reports and articles about that shit like bet TFV uh, Smash and uh, yeah JA and them I believe he was involved with it yeah they started having that shit on like the newspaper like every other week man. Like wow. Them dudes were going off on that shit. And you know what it is? It makes the window cloudy and white, mm. like milky. Now, when you're in a black tunnel and the fucking, you get me? It's like a black background. It yeah. looks like someone took a white marker almost. It would come out that fucking crisp. It was brilliant when it came to doing it on the subways. But doing it on storefront windows, when you have light on both sides, you have the outside light mm -hmm. and the inside the store light. It's just kind of like... You, I would do something like that if they caught me shoplifting or something. Uh, okay. Like, you motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I think it's good for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to fuck someone, a store owner's day up, I think the shit it does, it's the best. You know, it beats a rock. A rock makes a lot of noise and alarms and shit. That stuff, you could fuck someone's window up. You know how much it costs for them to fix a fucking storefront window? Yeah, man. Shit. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. I would have liked to see the first guy that tried to fucking clean that off. Yeah. He didn't well, eventually <laughs> they figured it out. They got some kind of filler. Okay. It's almost like an oil that they'd slide over it, and the taste, the tag yeah. goes right away. Oh, okay. Uh, they wow. eventually figured it out. They did, uh, to the best of my knowledge, yeah. yeah. But yeah, they were all fucked up on the subway. They were thinking yeah. about it. They would start putting like pieces of plastic because they're etchy. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a scratch in the sandpaper. Dover. Too, fucking yeah. Dover. Fucking Dover. had like every single fucking window on every single subway. Little corners like scratchies yeah. with like a, like a nail or some shit. I think a, 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 a drill bit. You take a, a diamond uh, coated drill bit or some shit like that. You get right up in there. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. So heading into the 2000s, because that's like those guys late 90s, early 2000s with the etch and all the crazy yeah. stuff. Are there any writers that you start noticing? Any, any respect to anybody that was in the 2000s? <laughs> Anybody that you could think of? Maybe leftovers from the 90s? I'm not going to lie to you. At a certain point, I literally just, I just didn't care anymore. Like I just couldn't. I mean, at that point, you know, into the 2000s, and like 83, I became RD. It's like... I just, I think I took in as much of it as I actually wanted to. Okay. And I just, like, I cut off thinking about graffiti, like, anything coming about it. Like, you and me, we were, and your friend, we were just talking, right? And it's like, I'm, I don't even know half these people, you know what I mean? They're active nowadays. I can't even read most of the shit. Like, Manhattan, I pay attention to it. And I'll say, after, like, DMS, YKK, um... Like that era of time, like the DMS, the YKK, yeah. uh, RFC. Yeah. You know, after, well, RFC's before that, but uh, that period of time, after that, I just, I don't really accept it. You know, that's just my mindset. You know, like I, I look at like, um, if someone does a comeback or someone, oh shit, check that out, you know? But yeah, like after RFC, YKK, and DMS, yeah, like so that you're point. About like because yo, you gotta remember that. Yeah, so MQ scuff and the RFC. Forget Guess about five. it. The little Ross and Aos, man. Like I never even knew that they were really like RA. You know, I mean um, RFC like that, man. Yeah. Like yeah, that, like I, I when I knew them, I knew them when they were little, little. I swear, I was like 17, 18 years old, and they're like four or five years younger than me, man. Speaking when of, I used um, to hang out with them, man, I, like, yeah, they were, I, they, they weren't, like, they were Rossineos, yeah, they started writing graffiti, but RFC wasn't around at that point, like, they, I, I lost touch with them when I got married and moved to the Bronx, I never heard from them again, and then later on, I see this whole big RFC movement, like, yo, them dudes were wild, yo, them motherfuckers catch you out there, yeah, man, they cut you up with a razor real quick, I remember they even ran graffiti down there, and I, like, thinking, shit, I gotta be careful down here, these dudes get you out there, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, them fucking dudes, they didn't play. They took that shit to a whole new level, I believe. Like RFC. Uh, yeah. Speaking of YKK, you mentioned on your channel having a beef with Scuff, but also kind of being friendly with Kez5, where 
you said uh, I would be going out rag and scuff, and I would come home, and Kiss Five would be on, on the fucking couch. Yeah, yeah, fuck. he was hanging out with uh, Sammy a lot at that point. That's when D Three was living with me. I think that's the time you were talking about too, when you were about at that same period of time. Nineties, early. 90s. Yeah, yeah, like two thousand. So you had a lot of problems. That's when he just came out of prison. Yeah. yeah. So he was hanging out with Kez Five a lot. And not really. I, I never looked at Scuff or really, like I said, any beef really like, like oh my God, you're going to be, yeah. you know, like I didn't do that. I'm sorry. Like it's just, and it's funny as fuck. Like some of the shit I read about online, like, oh shit, I'm going to break you up. I'm going to do this. I'm like, yeah. please, man. But with Scuff, it's like, you know, I'll always say he was my most worthy opponent. Like honestly, like I, I he, and he never really got out of line in, in the sense of doing some dick shit, like, like Posting addresses and stuff. I have nothing but the, oh, the most respect for Scuff, man. Like, he really, he put, like, everyone to oh, J.A., this, J.A., that. Nah, he ain't do half the shit. Scuff really fucking took it to me for decades. You got me? Okay. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, he was on me hard body, man. Definitely, 100%. So that's I your... give him nothing but the most respect. And it's, you know, it, it, those guys were putting it in. That's what I say. DMS, of course, were putting it in, and they're another rough bunch. You know, they weren't fucking around. As a matter of fact, isn't it? I've heard stories of DMS and RFC beating and fighting, and I think uh, one of them stabbed MQ or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's what I heard. All them dudes, man. RFC, very, very violent, man. I think they were like out there, like fucking hard. Like after we were already slowing down, like three, five, seven. Most of us were done and just like. Moving on with our life or in jail. A couple of people had passed away already. But yeah, I'm RFC dudes, man. With the violence, man, they really fucking went there, man. Definitely, man. Yeah. So in 2017, you have a, kind of a high-profile arrest. I mean, the Daily News picked it up. Um, they, you know, they had your name in there and everything. And then, then I believe it was the Post who decided that they actually wanted to do... They wanted to meet you, and they hmm. actually did a story on you. They took a picture of you by the bridge. They did like a whole thing on you. Um, yeah, what was the, what was the behind that arrest? What were you doing at that point in your life? What led up to that arrest? And then I want to hear actually about also the newspaper hitting you up saying that they want to do a story on you. All right. Well, at that point in my life, it's the strangest thing because I really wasn't that active. Like graffiti wise, I was actually kind of like on a two three month rest. Like I was. I mean, m me taking a rest is like. Some other guys like hustle, like, <laughs> like I, like, but I mean, you know, it's kind of on the back burner, like I wasn't going out as much. But, you know, like, I, even when I say I'm retired, like, to, to, to most people, I'm still not, <laughs> it's yeah. hard to explain, but yeah, yeah, like, I really wasn't that active at that point. And I just, I was getting on my bicycle, I come out this building, my son was on his way to school. And uh, he walked up the block first, and then I came out with my bicycle. And some pretty-looking lady, man, she looked like that uh, Scarlett Johansson or something <laughs> like Nice, you know, beautiful woman, big ass, big tits, thin waist, you know. She said, Robert? So I'm like, yeah. I thought maybe I met her or something, or I knew her or something. All of a sudden, this dude looked like Chris Rock. Come up behind me, click, click, click. Shit. Handcuffed me under arrest. I said, shit, what I do? <laughs> what the fuck? <coughs> he ducked me in the car. I said, I just put my bicycle back inside. They said, no, it's evidence. And they threw it in the trunk of the car. So on my um, Facebook, they had pictures of me with that same Canada. They have video footage of the vandal, like the club vandal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, like I'm on that same Canada. Like, and it's like a purple, it's a 1983, hey, 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 uh, this was made in the USA. You remember that shit? Yeah, it's a purple, it's a metallic plum, Canada. <laughs> It's like fucking from 1983 or something. A perfect paint. Like, not many of them are still around. You get me? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's got the brook seat on it and shit. Like, they're like, yo, that's the same bike. I'm like, well, it ain't like a fingerprint. I'm thinking to myself that you can't. Just because, you know, there's still going to be a couple of million of them out there on this earth or something. You know, don't even yeah. know. But, yeah, no, they, they, yeah. so they threw that shit in the trunk of the car. Asked me a bunch of questions and put me through the system. Yeah, I went before the judge. I said, I ain't do that stuff. This, that. You know, they had a lot of footage and everything. Yeah. yeah. Video footage, photos, everything. Yeah. But after that, then I think, what was it? The Post, I believe, uh, they reached out to you because they wanted to actually do a story on you. Yeah, and she told me um, after the case, because, you know, you don't want to fuck your, your case up. Right. You know, like, and I said, I'll go, fuck, I'll do it. You know, whatever. You know, so she was here in front of my building 
And that's when she was talking to me about it. So I said, I really don't care. You know, like, I, what are they going to do? Like, I'm yeah. not going to get locked up forever. It's fucking graffiti. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not like murder or something, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really worried about it. But I told her, yeah, whenever. So she came back and she sat on the stoop there. And I told her, you know, pretty much what's in the post. Yeah. There's a few things she said wrong. And that's kind of like what I was talking about before. About what people, but for instance, when I was talking about, about the ink and going through it, I'm talking about doing the insides. Yeah. And she was talking about doing bubble letters on the outsides. Like, you know, but to the average human being, insides, outsides, whatever, he's writing graffiti on subways, you know. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't in the outsides. I never really did fill ins like that by myself. I was always with people that were doing fill ins. And the fact that my child was there, he really wasn't there. Like, she never met my child a day in her life. Oh, wow. I don't know why she would say my child was a 14-year-old child, 15-year-old child standing next to me while we're doing the interview. That wasn't true. <clears throat> my child was at school, actually. Wow. Actually, it was at Taekwondo okay. yeah, when we did that meeting. Yeah, she never met my child. <laughs> so right. after the court case, they, I kept... Um, Say, no, 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 I do that shit, this, that, you know. And then eventually, uh, final offer. <laughs> 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 final offer, 500 bucks. All right, all right, I yeah. did it, I did it, I did it. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they have to explain to them. So I'm like, yeah, I went down there and I wrote the graffiti. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that was that, yeah. <laughs> 500 bucks. And I had the best 500 bucks I ever spent. Yeah, know? right. Like, who said crime don't pay, man? I, uh, I, I've been doing pretty good, like, with my artwork and stuff. You know, it's been selling and everything. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you up to now? So you're making art. you got the YouTube channel. I'm going to link it to this video, RD357. Oh, that'd be great. Of yeah, course. Thank you. If you yeah. guys want to hear more stories. Yeah, I have an Instagram um, with my artworks on it. And there's also... Um, yeah, if you go on to my YouTube, I'm directing everyone. If anyone's ever yeah. interested in like looking at my artwork that I actually do or something, I pretty much go by RD three five seven across the, the board. The graffiti right? tag yeah. that I write. So if you see like RD tags, uh, it's RD three five seven with the pointy uh, ice cream cone D. Ice cream cone. Uh, I got Let's one see right it. here. You got the the. Yeah, it is a piece of a railroad track. <laughs> Is that held up high? Yep, there you go. Is my shirt too black? No. Nope. Right, you see that RD that? And then, this is normally how I write it. Yep. And it's the normal way. This fucking thing's heavy. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> I got... So, yeah, man, this was great. I really appreciate it. I think, you know, I hope to speak to you again because I know there's a lot of other stuff. Yeah, that, definitely, uh, man. Yeah. You guys should go to his channel because it's not just graffiti, it's. New York City, a bunch of different crimes, a bunch of different characters you were around. Yeah, I grew up around a lot of people, man. Yeah. Alpo, a bunch of people, man. Yeah. Alpo used to go swimming in John Jay Park and shit. Redhead Joey, that's a dude you should really talk to, man. Redhead Joey. My boy Redhead Joey, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, He RD. knows a lot of people, too, yeah. Thanks a lot, man. This was a lot of fun. Definitely, Let's man. Do this again. Yeah. <laughs>